for your political issues, social justice advocacy, education, empowerment, enlightenment, roots and culture discovery, linking up to lifting up humanity and community service projects, local and diaspora economic projections. We bring you these and many more on the Culture Queen TV show. are watching Culture Queen TV. So Samuel, um, uh, this museum is so filled with diversity. It is so filled with artifacts that really show um, um, unity and diversity blended together. Tell me, uh, Back in my country, I would become a member of a place like this mm. because it's too much to learn in depth and authentic and meaningfully to do in one mm. session. So do you guys have any memberships or uh, um, how do you handle frequent visitors? Okay, so um, we have what we call the Friends of the Museum. Okay. Okay, Friends of the National Museum of Ghana. So once you become a member of the Friends of the National Museum of Ghana, sometimes you can come in. Once you come in for the first time, subsequent visits, you can just come in for free. Mm -hmm. Get to, you know, learn or reminisce your experiences that you had from your previous visit. That is okay. what is very common. That is what we usually do over here. So it's, you become a friend of the uh, National Museum, Museum of Ghana, like member and that's kind of yeah. uh, a mm -hmm. membership, synonymous to a membership. membership yes. So now is this a once a year donation? How does the that... donation is very liberal. Mm -hmm. So what they also do for us is when you think you can access some funding from some organization somewhere for us, it is allowed. We are always our arms are always welcome and open okay. to receive. Individuals have donated on many occasions. Annually. Sometimes annually, sometimes biannual, sometimes um, quarterly. Okay. So it depends on when it comes in, as and when it comes in. Oh, okay. Our arms are open to receive them. Okay. And so uh, never say never. Never the say sea, never. See never drive. <laughs> That's what you say, guys. See never drive. Doesn't matter how much comes in, we are always welcome to receive uh, those. Uh, Help and those assistance. Yeah. So I would like to off, uh, offer the opportunity for you to talk direct to our viewers to uh, if you would like to uh, become a friend of the uh, Museum of Ghana uh, if you are planning to visit Ghana from an outside nation uh, this is put please put this on your uh, list of tours to come visit you will not uh, leave the same. You may need to visit once or twice because I can tell you I surely will. I will make this place um, a home away from home similarly to how I d used to do with the Museum of Science and History. Uh, I was a member of the uh, Z Z Jacksonville Zoo for years. I was I've been a, over a decade so every year I would renew and increase um, some subscription to renew your membership. It was just, a, it was, uh, uh, they, they systemize it. So okay. when you become a member, right. you, you like say for instance, today is what, 7th November. Mm -hmm. So if I join today, 7th of November, I can come as many times as I want until 7th of November, November next year, when I have to renew my membership. And usually we do, we have been a member for more than a decade at many of the places that I was a member to before I came here. So I see this as a similar place that I would love to be a member to and come and my children used to come and my oldest is 30 and my youngest is seven and they all knew the place. And I would love for them to be able to learn this diversity, uh, this unity, this rich culture 
that the Museum of uh, Ghana has to mm -hmm. offer. So mm -hmm. why don't you just tell us how to follow up and get in contact with you? All right, so um, you can check it up on our website. So once you visit the, the Ghana Museum's website, um, which is uh, www.gmmb.gov.gh. Yeah, so you, you go to a section which is on partnership, and then you see uh, membership, and then you can click on that button, you can enter some few details, and you, that is how you get to become a member with us or a friend of the National Museum of Ghana. That shouldn't be, it shouldn't take you more than two minutes or three minutes to get that done. Once you get to our website, you can just navigate it and then you have it there. The Culture Queen TV show. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, what is on display is on, on Islam. Mm -hmm. okay, in connection with the trans-Saharan trade. So, with time, there will be variations. You might have Christianity being displayed. You might also have uh, uh, the indigenous religion also being displayed. Okay. And so, even before we, we talk about uh, the religion proper, you have a view, yeah. You have a view of some few beats here on display. Now, beats play very important roles in our. I see you have some few beats on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very important role in our traditions and customs. So we have, uh, but the oldest among them are the stone each beat. Yeah, so two thousand beats. Wow. Uh, so someone would wear that, that. Yes, as necklaces, as bangles or bracelets. Yes. But these are stones. Myself, sometimes I'm very curious about how they're able to carry this as a Yes. Thing. But these are beginnings of, you know, art or probably, you know, beauty or beautifying yourself with mm -hmm. ornaments and stuff like that. So probably it worked for them anyhow. I might yes. try it. <laughs> yeah, but, but what is unique about this is that the, the stones have uh, the perforated holes naturally. Okay. Yeah, so what the Stone Age man did was to piece them together to... So you, you go looking for these tools and then you have this art being created. Aside that, we have other beads like made from bauxite, glass, mm -hmm. um, wood, clay, mm -hmm. several other materials which was used in making them, you know, for different, different purposes. We have a section on a life cycle, a cycle of life. So when we get there, we'll still talk some more on the beads. But just a quick one. Mm. Um, one of the commonest um, uh, use of beads for babies, babies for an example, is this. When a baby is born newly, traditionally you have beads around the wrist, you have beads around the waist, either the knee or the ankle. Now, our old people used to monitor the growth of the child with the beads. With the beads. Ah. In the sense that when the child is growing very well and getting bigger, the beads become Tight. tighter mm -hmm. on, on that child. If your child is growing poorly, it's always lean, always sick, the beads are very loose and it's kind of falling off. So mm -hmm. as a mom, then you have to and that's the indicator give, yeah. exactly give a lot of attention you know to your child so that your child can you know grow up being very well yeah so that is one of the reasons why you have aside that you know kids and babies are very vulnerable mm -hmm. so some of these bees also serve as protection mm -hmm. yeah so you have them you know protecting the child from maybe ill wishes or those who have mm -hmm. you know evil intentions you know against the baby so the baby is protected from this kind of so uh, is uh people. the bead how do the beads protect is it uh so they are rituals so the the material is ordinary uh -huh. okay but it's the must, belief system behind the belief system the, behind it so rituals are performed with those beads mm -hmm. okay before it's put on the child okay so it's not like you just find randomly some beads somewhere and then you claim it's protecting you know mm -hmm. no, no. okay it's a, whole it's a it's a ritual, ritual performed of beliefs them. yes and the beliefs it's faith i mean it's yeah, it's, it's, it's their it's the faith yeah that they have and yeah then you have the child i protected. understand okay yeah. so once we get to the the beast section on the life cycle we'll still come we'll back elaborate and okay. how okay. They are. So we have here um, fertility dolls so these are what we call the Ikraba doors. Now, traditionally or in the past, before orthodox medicines and you know healthcare or orthodox healthcare, we had this system of helping barring women, you know, get pregnant. Hmm. In the sense that this is a door that will be given to a barring woman, a woman who cannot get pregnant. You so you get this from the shrine, that's from the priest or priestess, and then you have to care for this door like it's a baby. 
So you wow. get to sing your lullaby to it. You get to wrap it on your back at home or you take it to the market center. Oh. But most importantly, you have to believe in, in the gods that they're going to hear your cry or your mm -hmm. prayers and grant you a child. Oh. And those who believed in it worked for them. Wow. Yeah, so you would have this and then you get pregnant. And once you conceive and you have your child, then this wooden <laughs> sculpture becomes a play door for the, the baby. Yeah, wow. so that is a Ikiaba door or the so these are just doll. variations of the same variations of the same fertility, fertility doll. doll exactly okay so are these variations from different time periods or just variations based on diversity yeah variations based on diversity so the asantis usually have you know the one with a round face with a striped neck mm -hmm. that's their representation of beauty ah, yeah okay. so that is what you have over there and then this for the fantasy you know, the one flat long faces is very common among the fans, which are another group mm -hmm. of people. Uh, ethnic yes. group, yeah. Another ethnic groups like the Gans, they have mm -hmm. the Chubi, the Everest have BS, and it's cut across. Yeah. Okay. So this is for diversity. Okay, so th there you there's a life cycle. What is this about? Yeah, so this here is indicating what we refer to as a life cycle. Mm -hmm. So very traditional stages of life. Like, okay. So you, you go through child, if you are born as a person, you get to puberty, you at a long somewhere along uh, in time you get uh, married mm -hmm. and then eventually you pass on or you die so these are like the four main traditional stages that everyone goes through so within these areas you right, different rights of passage yeah different different rights of passages oh. for each of them and like uh, so the birth so we can talk about that okay. over here okay so here we have a naming ceremony which is a childbirth now this is the the biggest occasion in the life of every child or every baby when you are born as a baby here you are considered like a technically like you are like a stranger to the whole community mm. so you are kept indoors for some time about seven really? days yes how many days seven days seven days seven and then on the eighth day that is when you are taken through the naming mm. now so the the mom and the dad will come up with a name but the one that confers the name on the child is the lineage head or the clan head or the family head they confirms so, it yeah, that uh, pronounces the name on the child and outdoors it to the people, to the whole okay, community. Okay, okay. And this is a man of a noble character. So it's believed that once he does the name, his good moral values automatically transfer onto the child. Oh. And then that child grows up to become very, 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 very responsible. Now, you notice that uh, there's a drop of uh, water on the tank of the baby or, or on the lip, and then a drop of uh, gin, alcohol as well. Now, this is very symbolic. Right now, the water there represents truth and life, and then the gin or the alcohol represents evil. Mm. So, the child is told symbolically that once you grow up, you pursue what is good, what is true, what is right, and then shun and avoid what is evil mm -hmm. and what is bad. And that is how you get to grow up very responsible in the society. Now, when the baby is being introduced or you are being outdoored, this is your official introduction to the extended family from both the mother's side and the father's side. And then you are also officially introduced to the entire community. Wow. And then you are presented to the ghost, the spirit that this is a new they member. Hold the baby. Oh. Yeah. So every all these um, people or all these uh, entities have oh. a role in your upbringing as a child. So in time past, when you misbehave, when you are growing up and you misbehave anywhere in the community, anyone can discipline you. Because at your naming ceremony, you were kind of like a social Part of the community. You, yes, you were Here. introduced. <laughs> Take care of our baby for us. Make sure that this child grows up to become very responsible. And, you know, so everyone keeps a, an eye on that baby. And then once you are growing up, you know, there's a check for you anywhere you go. Listen, I've been here in Ghana for seven months. It's not like that in yeah. U.S. Right. So I would see people, like, chastising a, a, just a random, Yeah, yeah. I will yeah. beat you. And I was like, you can't <laughs> do that. But now yeah. you're explaining to yes. me why the culture uh embraces the the what we say the african proverb of it takes a village to raise a child yes. but that is all part of yeah. uh the the baby right when you hold that baby yeah, up yeah, yeah. um contrary to us we have to name our babies in two days before you leave the hospital <laughs> before you it's already a birth certificate stamped and yeah. it gets mailed yeah. to you well you get okay. to go pick it up after a certain okay. amount of time but 
uh, we don't we don't just get to have humans That's, and no name, no nothing. Yeah, <laughs> when you yeah. leave that hospital, that baby has a name. That baby is is given a social security number. Okay. Uh, and that's it. So a lot of American families, we have to, we think about names inside the womb yeah. because you don't, you just don't have time. You, it, it, yeah. None Everybody of this ritual and right yeah. is, is even, which they're, they're too speedy mm -hmm. in America in to allow the this beauty of a of baby right mm -hmm. to transition uh, through culture. Yeah. So this is great. The culture queen TV show. Here we have a, a collection of stews, Ghanaian stews. Mm -hmm. Now, these play a very important role depending on the geographical area. Okay. Now, in southern Ghana, we, most of our southern Ghanaian chiefs pick up the authority from the stew. Mm -hmm. Once you become enthroned, what you call, you know, being enthroned as a king. Yes. We, over here, it's enthronement. Yeah. You're okay. enthroned as a chief or a king with your traditional stew. And that is mm -hmm. where you get your authority from. So the ones here in the middle, these ones here, and this one at the back here, these are all ceremonial stools. So these are the classifications. We have the ceremonial stools used by our chiefs, our queens, queen mothers. Mm -hmm. We have the princes, princesses, family head lineages. They use the ceremonial stool because it carries power and mm -hmm. authority. Now we also have this one here, that here. These are okay. domestic stools. So typically you find these ones at home mm -hmm. or in the kitchen, in the mm -hmm. traditional kitchen. And then there's this third category, which is a ritual stew. The ritual stew, we'll see one inside this dark room here. So yes. we're talking about diversity. Yes. Like, how, do, how does diversity play itself into these stools? Yeah, so it's the diversity here is the, the ethnic groups being represented here. In the sense that um, we are kind of coexisting through this so here. someone knows what group this is by looking at this exactly so once you see the symbol in it you know that this belongs to this particular tribe or this particular group of people okay once you see this you know that this belongs to this particular area so that is what is seen over there and even aside that too you see the animal in the middle of this too there's a uh, two crocodiles sharing yes. one stomach uh -huh. yet they are fighting over food why do you fight over food when whatever you eat separately goes into the same pot. Mm -hmm. So this is talking about unity and diversity. Mm -hmm. So our differences should not separate us because at the end of the day, it's all geared towards one particular purpose. The same place. Common yes. the same place. Yes. So unity and diversity being represented here. So we have the Akans using this type of stews. The Evers also have these stews. The Gans also have these type so of the stews. diversity is yeah. that each group have their own imprint. symbolism, exactly. But the that. unity is each group have one. Exactly, each group has their the stew. Mm -hmm. exactly. Okay. Yeah. This brings us to the rituals to which we are seeing here. So with this type, this is used by uh, the traditional priests and priestesses in the shrine. Ah, the shrine so this is, is representing a, a shrine. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, so it's they usually, stay inside of a shrine? Yeah, they stay in the shrine. So typically it's in the it's like a, a groove in the in the forest mm. where they, they stay in. And okay. their stool is smeared with white clay. And that mm. shows the sanctity and then the purity, purity. Uh -huh. of the stool as well as the, the priest or the officiant himself or herself. I'm sitting on it. Yeah. Sometimes okay. during festivals they kind of bring it once in a while. You know, they sit and perform some rituals for the whole community. Oh, okay. On behalf of the, the towns. You know, wow. And that is where you get to see some of these tools in public. Aside this, the rituals will be used by the priests and priestesses. We have another one which is uh, used for the initiation of kings mm -hmm. and chiefs. So once you become a king, it's also in a dark room. Very, it's a sacred act. Wow. So when it's, you are next in line to become a king, you are taken into the stool room, you are blindfolded, and then you have to handpick particular stool, whichever stool you handpick, you heard that, yes. So whichever stool you handpick, you, you... That's the lose. house, that's basically the... Good. You take up the authority from that stool and you lose your maiden name in, in place of that name. So um, if probably you are, uh, you are Mamadi, Mamadi mm -hmm. is your, your name, right? Mm -hmm. And then maybe you become a, a queen in queen a traditional mother. area, a queen mother. Maybe you are the seventh for the sixth person becoming a queen mother. So you can, you can become uh, maybe a, a, a sante Hima or Yasantua. Let me use Yasantua for an example. So you become Yasantua the seventh, mm -hmm. like the seventh queen mother of that mm -hmm. community. So if it's a king, let's use. I uh, understand. In fact, I was asked yes. to be a queen mother in Cape ah. Coast. 
Okay. Um, but I didn't understand it. Oh, uh, and okay. I'm a person of, of learned background, so I, I don't really move in areas that I don't understand. You don't but understand. You don't what you're fool. saying is, is yeah, I'm, I'm understanding it a, a little bit more, which is why we're going to devote a whole episode to this culture of family, leadership, uh, chief, king, queen, mother yes, yeah. uh, topics. Right. Okay, so we can talk about the Asante King or the Asante Henry. Right, so here we have the Asante Hine. So this is uh, reflecting or depicting an Asante King. Mm. Right. So the current one is Utu Fawcett to the second. Now, he usually sits on, or typically they sit on the sitting a, chair. A big chair. Big, this um, or throne, if you would say. A throne. Yeah, this okay. uh, represents firmness and stability. A sitting, a stand okay. firm. Okay. Now, he typically wears the kente cloth. Mm -hmm. or this is the most prestigious royal fabric southern Ghana. And now the pattern, unfortunately, you cannot touch. <laughs> oh, they say no touch. <laughs> yes. So the pattern you see here, or the design, is called Ajinasan. Mm -hmm. Ajinasan, the mind is finished. Our ideas have been exhausted. This is the most complex design you can weave as a weaver. Mm -hmm. So anytime someone weaves this, you've picked, you've reached your ultimate. And you can never weave anything more complex than, than this. this design. So this was the preserve of kings and chiefs. They had it. And once he's dressed in this, he looks very elegant. He looks very, uh, very, 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 very... Very royal. Very royal. Mm -hmm. So very nice. And they, they adorn themselves with a lot of gold, gold jewelry. And it's pure gold. Original pure gold. On adultery. The culture very, print very TV gold. show. From the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. It's pure gold all over. And that shows the wealth. That shows how powerful. Yeah, so... With us here is a, also another exhibit showing the northern team. Now, we have very, very powerful kingdoms in the north. We have the Mount Pussy, Kagoma, and the Music. That's some of the earliest kingdoms that emerged in Ghana. Mm -hmm. Now, a typical king from the north, northern side, would wear about four of these. Four? Four. four. Ones at the boot. Ah. I know it's very hot. I know that uh, expression was coming. Yeah, so <laughs> there's always, you know, there's always a man servant standing somewhere. Who's okay. Fish and then there's a fish tower to wipe you off. Right? Yes. Right. Oh, what for though? Now it shows his royalty. It shows how very powerful he is. He looks very flamboyant. Okay. Very, very massive. Okay. And that gives him his courage and power. Now every ordinary person, when you wear this. Maximum like two. But usually it's just one. Just I have to come back to a question. So northern northern is it is it colder up there or something? Hot. Very humid. I I just I guess I need to understand like yeah, why so possible. much cloth if it's hot? Yeah, so it's actually woven in such a way that there's a lot of air. I would have, if they had come here on Friday, you would have seen me in my traditional. And it, cool. what I and it keeps you cool. And it keeps you cool, in other yeah, words. It's, it's oh. a lot of air going through oh, this. Oh, okay. The cotton itself is very open and very flexible. It allows the air. It, although it's thick, it still keeps you cool. Yes. So it's, a, uh, it's an assumption of mine that if it's thick, that you're hot. But in reality, the way the material is woven together, maybe that. Right. So, so you weave it in such a way it doesn't become tight. There's a lot of space for air circulation. Mm, interesting. Okay. That is the technique. So you were saying, I'm sorry, I just had to jump that question to you <laughs> before we moved on. But this king would always have. A musician who sings. In she sings a lot of affirmations, a lot of honor uh, or through the music that he does. And then the instrument that he plays is a dondo drum. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's, it's very rhythmic. I play it myself. So there, there's a lot of strings you find or roots on the side of the drum. Mm -hmm. right. Now, it's used for teaching. 
it was a very high pitch. It was a high pitch with this drum. Understand me, you know, you okay. Have to you. you have to squeeze the the strings mm -hmm. and, the ropes on it, and then you use a high pitch. Then okay. You very low pitch. You Let it go. Ah, uh, okay. Simultaneously, you press it by that manner, and then you have a very nice. Music. Oh wow! In Nigeria, they use it as a stopping drum. Commonly, they really don't have it. So it's not associated with sending messages. No, no, no. Okay. What we use for sending messages. You know, station or stationary on the ground, and then you dip in this way, you don't carry it around. Okay. So this is just yeah, near yeah, to the yeah, entertainment. Uh huh. The two drums will come near to the space. Okay. This is the, the message to you. We're telling you what we're about to tell you about story. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Like now, speaking of um, um, our history, African American history, when we were brought to America, uh, the white man would not allow singing or drumming of any sort because they recognized that communications was being uh, transferred from plantation to plantation sometimes or even throughout the plantation so it was prohibited so when we talk about losing our music our culture our language everything was stripped in order to make us human cattle that um, wasn't thinking, wasn't had no rights to marriage, had no rights to your children. We had no rights to anything, not even the clothes that we wore. Uh, you had to wait and be given one set of clothes for the entire year. So um, when you're the telling me these things, TV show. I, from my perspective, I'm hearing and I, again gaining more identity and understanding for the the break in that some 400 year period that we were pulled away from our origin but bringing back uh in the reconciliation uh from the diaspora back to our mother ancestral land so thank you for your sharing today yeah so we can see traditional architecture okay okay so we have here traditional architecture Right now, this is very typical of Southern Ghanaians. So our buildings usually or typically built of mud. You have the thatch, raffia, or palm branches as roof, and then you have uh, this communal compound sort of living quarters. Now, so this is for Southern Ghanaians, very rectangular or square mm -hmm. in form. Now, in the north, yes, of course, some places we have rectangular buildings. But what's commonly available to them is summer hat form or round form or circular form building which will be seen very soon for a clearer or clearer understanding of it. Mm -hmm. So among the southern Ghanaian like Asantis they have this teach one, man, teach one, one seek one, love one another cause united we can be one proud African children of the sun never give up on spreading the love yeah. link one, lift one cause hard times will come Stay strong, don't stop, cause better days will come, so move on. Welcome to Link Up to Lift Up Movement. It's better when we come together. So Link Up to Lift Up, Link Up to Lift Up. So we can empower you when you about to give up. Link Up to Lift Up, together we can rise up now. To everybody who needs freedom. Link Up to Lift Up, Link Up to Lift Up. So we can empower you when you about to give up. Link Up to Lift Up, together we can rise up now. So Link Up now. The teacher learn and focus on the future When black people come together We can cancel new world order The killing as a murder Drop the gun and stop the murder Never give up on spreading the love yeah. Well, I don't know if I'm Cut out to have uh, Co-wives <laughs> No, they all co Coexisted peacefully Oh, okay really, like, well, Is it still common today? No, today it's not common Okay In some traditional areas in People still take on additional wives. Oh, okay. And then Muslim too. It's yeah, we do know the Muslim things. Yeah. Now, it's just a month. One, 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 one. one, 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 one. one. <laughs> okay, okay. So we can see the the northern architecture from the other side, and then to show the diversity that we we experience also. Yes, diversity. Link up to lift up, link up to lift up So we can empower you when you about to give up Link up to lift up, 
Take up to lift up to get out. We can rise up now. Okay, all right. Yeah, right, so here we have a traditional architecture or a traditional building style from the northern part of Ghana. Mm -hmm. Like I indicated earlier, once again, in the north, some places they have you know, square or rectangular buildings. And what is very common and dominant or predominant is the summer hut or the round, mm -hmm. the circular type of building. So this is also for one big family. Okay. So the head of the family stays up here. Now, some people have flat roof. Other areas to they have theirs. This hatch, the summer hat form as roof. Now you can dry cereals, corn, and other food stuff here. But at night, if you are a little tired, you want to rest before, you know, midnight or so, or very deep into the night, you can just rest off the soft mm -hmm. so Is the it like wife, with this architect? Mm -hmm. Do the, is it something inside, and he so just want to rest up top? So this is a bedroom. Okay, inside. Inside. Okay. okay so you okay. go through this way. Okay. You enter the the room, mm -hmm. and then you can rest up there. Mm -hmm. But there's a provision for the first wife, the first wife to be here. Okay. The first one, the second wife, the third wife, the fourth wife. Okay. Everyone has. But a the room, husband's kind of at the center. Yes, this way from the head. Mm, the side, okay. you can easily monitor your wife from here. <laughs> okay. So you can have a kitchen, you can have a store also somewhere there. Then everyone plays a role. This is a, someone grinding. You know, someone so it's a common them. area for all of the wives to cook together, mind yes. the children, exactly. and yeah, normal yeah. way of life together. So this is where you have that belonging there, that communality, you know, being a trend among families. And I, I showed you a silo. Or a storehouse under a cliff. Yes. To the other section, under the cliff. Yes, this is a typical one that you find in a compound, not under a cliff. This is inside a house. Mm -hmm. For the use of. For the use by. Of this a, community. A, a household. <laughs> yes. This community or a family. Yeah. Yes. So this is it. So you brought a food to the top, then you can put out and down there. So you hand over the food item to this person, then they get it for it. And then the whole stock is at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We also have animals, you know, who also live on the compound. In some areas, in some areas, there's a separate space for them. And then to enter into this compound, you come through gates. These two rooms here are occupied by gates, ancestral spirits. So they kind of protect the people within mm -hmm. that house. So sometimes, believe that if you if you have possible intention against the people, you are not able to go through this. Really. Process. Wow. Yes. So I would not want to be one of the wives that got to sleep with the animal. I mean, <laughs> I would be upset. <laughs> you know, uh, but I, I, okay, I, I, so the, these are domestic animals like the goats, you know, sheep, and so the deities. Um, who's the priest? Who's the priest that you know? You, uh, it's trouble getting me right. So these are the, the deities, ancestral spirits for the family. Mm -hmm. So there are special rights that are performed by the head of the family. So he would be considered also his own priest? Uh -huh, sort of, for the household. Okay. For the household or for the family. There are special uh, uh, observations and observances that we do on behalf of the family. And he, he would have done yeah, those that's... rituals here to block all bad energies yeah. from coming into his family. Okay, I understand. So very typical of this community is sometimes the men do the building. Most of the time, the men that build. There's some areas where the women do the building and coloring. Mm -hmm. and they, they view them as more artistic or more colorful when it comes to design. Design. Mm -hmm. Right, so I hope you've seen a lot so far. Yes. And we've kind of uh, developed enough appreciation for our culture, our heritage. Yes. Who we are as people. Absolutely. As I mentioned, this is only a beginning. This place is so filled with uh, information and knowledge and uh, culture that represents diversity and unity that uh, I know that we will definitely do a follow-up show with my little ones, the, the Cohen kids. So if you are interested, you can follow us on uh, Adventuring with the Coens because we'll show the other uh, exhibits of the Ghana Museum 
that we did not touch on today. But I want to thank you, Samuel, for being so um, detailed in your explanations um, as we toured the place and um, your passion for knowledge. Um, it kept my mind open and uh, so is my heart. So I want to say thank you for uh, being a great tour guide today. Right, thank you for thanking me. Yeah, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Anytime we are available to you, our services are always available. We hope you spread the news to mm -hmm. other your friends and family out there in the States. Yes. Let's, let's make this happen. Each one, reach one, teach one. Link up to lift up. Run away from negativity, don't focus on the vanity. Africans are powerful, we have all the ability. Your culture and integrity are better than the politics. When you link up, we give you opportunities. Oh, link up to lift up, link up to lift up. So we can empower you when you are about to give up. Link up to lift up, together we can rise up now. To everybody who needs freedom. The Culture Queen TV Show. Link up to lift up, so we can empower you when you are about to give up. Link up to lift up together, we can rise up now. So link up now, yeah. Each one, reach one, teach one, seek 